Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I'm going to create an underwater scene for my card and I will be using this new stamp by Simon's stamp which is called Under the Sea. This is a gorgeous stamp set and I can see that uh, it would uh, make a gorgeous art journal layout as well. But for today I'm going to work on a piece of um, white cardstock and this is actually watercolor paper and I am going to create an underwater scene using my Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to use my round foam tools to do the blending, but you can also use your brushes if you have them. I'm going to show you later on the difference on the look that you get using the different blending tools. So I will go ahead and start with my salty ocean. And I'm working again on a watercolor paper and you will see how beautifully everything blends. Now I'm going to the darker blue. And I will finish with the violet. And just because Distress Oxide Ink is a totally different formula of ink than the old Distress uh, inks, uh, it really applies too much ink on top of your paper. That means that um, it doesn't dry quickly on top of your paper, which gives you a lot of time to blend the inks together as uh, you go ahead and add even more. So now I am going to add the violet here and you see that it's quite vibrant so I'm going to make it look darker again by going over it with faded jeans. And I'm going to finish off my background by applying a little bit of black soot at the bottom. This is going to be the bottom of my ocean and I want it to look darker and uh, quite uh, light as we go to the top. So I'm going to show you now on uh, the exact same uh, watercolor paper how it looks if uh, you go ahead and do the blending with the brushes and you will see that you get a totally different look. Let me clean up my area here. And now you can see that with the brush you don't uh, add as much ink on uh, your paper as I did with the blending tool, which means that you have more control. You can also build up the layers as much as you like, but if you go for a more subtle, more pale look, then uh, the brushes are perfect for you. I'm going to finish it off so you can see how beautiful it looks and it's really quick and simple. And remember that you don't need too many brushes, uh, one brush for every shade of blue is enough just like I am doing here. You can see the difference on uh, the two looks, now I am going to work with the darker one just because this is the look that I am going for today. I am spraying water on top of it and since the ink uh, reacts with water this is going to blend the colors beautifully and at the same time I am going to add some splashes. I'm going to blot the excess water with a cloth and all those bubbles that will show up on my background are going to be perfect for the underwater look that I am going for. Now to complete my underwater scene I'm going to do some stamping and um, I have uh, chosen three of uh, the stamps from the Under the Sea stamp set. I'm going to stamp them with black suit ink. I am stamping them twice just to make sure that I have a good impression and then I am going to show you a really fun technique. So since I am using Distress Oxide inks, I can stamp one color on top of the other and the second color is going to show. So without moving my paper or my stamps, I am going to make sure that the stamps are nice and clean and then I will go ahead and add the second color. Before I do that, I give a quick uh, heat with my heat gun just to make sure that the first thing is dry and I will go ahead and touch up a few of those um, seaweeds, not everywhere. So when I stamp on top, I am able to see a little shadow of a different color. I don't want it to be super vibrant and that's exactly the, the look that uh, I got. So I'm really happy with that. Now I will continue and add a little bit of green at the tips of those grasses. I'm going to stamp on top again. And here is a close-up look on the finished card where you can see how that purple and green stands out against that black uh, stamped image. And now I did the first two stamps, I'm going to do the last one and this time I'm going to use picked raspberry. And you can go as bright as you like at the tip of those uh, stamps because um, as the time passes it's not going to be as vibrant as it is at the moment since uh, they are going to blend just a little bit. But you will be able to see that touch of uh, extra color on top of them. 
Now I am planning to have two jellyfish uh, floating around on my underwater scene, but um, I am going to paper piece the top of the jellyfish. And since I will not bother cutting out all those tentacles, I decided to stamp them so I can have them ready on top of my card. And again, I did use uh, black ink to stamp the tentacles, but I want to have a light touch of color on top of them. And since I am planning to have these jellyfish uh, pink and orange, I did add a little bit of uh, picked raspberry on top of it. Just like I did with the seaweeds and my corals at the bottom of my sea. And I don't want my jellyfish to be all alone there, so I'm going to give him a friend. And again, I am stamping all the tentacles with black suit, and I'm going to add a second color on top. And this time I'm going with Twisted Citron, which is again nice and vibrant, but it's not going to show up as vibrant as it looks at the moment. Now I did uh, go ahead and stamp my jellyfish on a piece of watercolor paper twice and as you can see I'm using my fuzzy cutting scissors to cut all around the top of the jellyfish. And here is another way of blending colors, this time I'm using my finger dabbers just because this is such a small area and I find it easier to do with a finger dabber than uh, the big uh, round uh, blending tools. So as you can see I'm uh, mixing up two colors directly on top of my paper. And again remember that this ink goes quite wet on top of your paper so it doesn't dry quickly and it's super easy to blend. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the second one and this time I'm going to mix uh, green with uh, yellow. And I don't know if you have tried that but just because that ink uh, doesn't dry so quickly you can even blend the colors with your finger just like I did here. Now I'm going to show you a fun technique using this ball embossing tool and this comes in a set with three different uh, tools like this one and an embossing mat but instead of using the mat I'm going to do it on a mouse pad just to show you that it's uh, possible to do it on any uh, soft surface. So I'm spraying the back of my jellyfish and I'm going to place them on top of my mat. Make sure it's not wet, <laughs> otherwise it's going to react with ink on top of uh, your jellyfish. And I'm going to go all around the edges of my cutouts using the ball tip of this tool. This is going to make uh, the cutout curve a little bit. And remember that uh, you can do that without spraying uh, with water your cutout, just like I did here. But I find that when I spray the paper, and it's a little bit damp, then it helps uh, the curving without breaking uh, the fibers of the paper. Now I do have a nice space there at the center to add some foam tape and when I'm going to stick it on top of my paper, you won't be able to see underneath the jellyfish. Hopefully you can see the dimension and how puffy it looks, but at the same time you can't see that uh, foam tape underneath. And I'm going to repeat the same process with a second jellyfish. Again with my ball I am going to go all around the edges. And again for this technique you need to work on a very soft surface. And you can see how nicely it curves. And I have a nice spot at the back and at the center to add a little piece of foam tape. Which is not going to show when I stick it on top of my card. This is a really fun technique that adds dimension, but at the same time, it doesn't allow the recipient to see what's happening underneath your elements. And here is a close-up look on my puffy jellyfish, where although I do get uh, the dimension, I don't have that classic look with uh, that uh, foam tip underneath. So now uh, all that's left to do is to stick a sentiment and for that I decided to go with this Hello die. This is an old die by Simon Says Stamp and as always you will find links to this die as well as everything I used for this video down below in the description area as well as on my blog. I have cut out my sentiment out of uh, white and black cardstock and I'm going to stick the white on top of the black, a little bit offset. This is a technique I really like to do since it adds a shadow on my sentiment and it helps it pop against the background. I'm adding uh, a little bit of white glue at the back and that's Nouveau Deluxe. 
and I'm going to place it on top of my background. As you can see, I have already created my card base. This is going to be black, and um, this is a top folding card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Now my panel is slightly smaller than the standard card, so this gives it a beautiful black frame around it. To finish off my card, I'm going to use my clear Nouveau Drops and add some uh, dots at uh, the top of my jellyfish, as well as create some bubbles all over my ocean. Now this is going to look a little bit milky, but it's going to dry completely clear. I just love the look of it, it's quite unique and I think I might repeat uh, pretty much the same idea on one of my art journal pages. So that was the card for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired and if you did don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close up photos of the card that I made today. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button because this is the way to tell me that you like my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and see you next time.